For more on the region's response to Zika, we sat down with Dr. Marcos Espinal, Director of Communicable Diseases at the Pan American Health Organization. He gives his honest assessment of the virus and what we can expect in the months ahead. Dr. Espinal, thank you so much for joining us. Is Zika a pandemic? Pleasure. Yes, it is a pandemic. It's in more than 20 countries in the Americas. It's also in the African continent in Cabo Verde or Cape Verde. And it's also in Maldives. So it's in several WHO regions. So where did Zika come from? Is it contagious? Can you die from it? Dying, no. Doesn't kill. It's a very mild disease if indeed the person develops symptoms. Very mild. People take painkillers and they go on with their life. Zika comes from the forest of Zika in Uganda uh, in 1947. That was when it was discovered by scientists in monkeys. Do you think Zika causes microcephaly? We're seeing all these cases of babies being born with underdeveloped brains. That's, Is a, very, like that's a very good question. But it's a question that we don't have the answer yet. The growing evidence suggests that Zika is associated with microcephaly in Brazil, uh, that it could potentially cross the placental barrier. Um, not only in Brazil, two years ago in French Polynesia there was, an, there was an outbreak of Zika and there were about 17 cases, 15, 17 cases of mothers delivering uh, children with microcephaly. Some of them opted for termination of pregnancy, others didn't opt for termination of pregnancy. So we are seeing evidence growing and growing. What happened is you cannot, you cannot conclude fully that is, uh, the cause of microcephaly is Zika because there might be confounding factors. There might be other factors that are influencing. There are viruses that produce also microcephaly, cytomegalovirus, rubella virus, toxic agents, chemical agents we can produce. So the studies need to be done. We cannot rush the information. But that doesn't mean that while we wait for the confirmation, we don't do something. We need to uh, mount an aggressive response to minimize the impact this virus could exercise over the people of the Americas and of the people of the other regions where it's affecting now. So how long do you think it will be before there is confirmation that Zika is or is not related to microcephaly? And what's happening behind the scenes as we speak? Well, you know, um, Brazil is conducting studies uh, to assess the potential uh, or estimate the risk of a woman with Zika virus infection. What is the risk of generating or giving birth to children with microcephaly? It's going to take time. It's not going to be tomorrow because the studies need to be done. If you remember the studies that link uh, smoking with uh, uh, lung cancer, they took time. So we need to make sure we do the, the, the studies properly. And it's happening. Following women, it's something that, uh, following women, pregnant women with Zika is something that Colombia is doing now. And the cohort of these women is going to give us um, a lot of information. But it doesn't matter, in our view, if the information comes a little bit late. What it needs now is to ensure we mount an aggressive response to control the mosquito. Well, I do want to get to treating and preventing in just a moment, but you mentioned Colombia, and there are reports now that possibly thousands of pregnant women in Colombia have the Zika virus. So what does this mean for them? Will they have children that could potentially have these birth defects? And is this just the beginning of what could be happening down there? Well, it remains to be seen. Um, this is why we call for aggressive control of mosquitoes to, you know, to try to avoid more infections. Uh, women that have been confirmed with Zika who are pregnant are being followed care carefully by Colombia with prenatal checks, with ultrasounds in the third trimester, because there's no way you can diagnose microcephaly in the first or second trimester of pregnancy. It's only suggested in the third trimester of pregnancy with ultrasounds, and then the most definitive diagnosis is when when the, 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 the baby uh, 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 the, the baby is, is born. The World Health Organization recently made a declaration uh, calling 
actually microcephaly and not the Zika virus, a public health emergency. Can you clarify the designation? Yes, um, what the declaration means is that the concern is basically the cluster of microcephaly and we need to do our best to accelerate the research to determine causality. Zika virus itself is not a dangerous thing. It doesn't create major problems. So the, the main concern is the microcephaly. So the declaration of emergency, although it's very closely linked to Zika, it refers to the cluster of microcephaly. Of course, the declaration also recommends measures to ensure strong surveillance for Zika virus, um, making sure that we do uh, prevention and control of the mosquito, you know, recommending the people to use, you know, um, uh, uh, repellents, to use personal protective measures like uh, uh, bed nets, long trousers, long shirts, and, uh, and that's the most important recommendation for women of reproductive age and pregnant women, avoid contact with the mosquito as much as possible. Do you think this designation came too late when we see all these different cases? Should something have been done earlier? No, I, 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 don't, I don't think it's a, it's a matter of late or early. I think it's a matter of gathering the data. Remember, the only country with microcephaly is Brazil, and we needed to make sure that the data are available to, to there has been some criticism, but I don't think we should uh, concentrate on that. I think the most important thing is move on and concentrate in the action that needs to be taken. I think the declaration is going to bring more interest on research and development, more interest in assess the causality of microcephaly, but you have to also gather the data because you might be declaring something that is an emergency that is not an emergency. So uh, it is important also to protect the liability of the organization in terms of, but I think it's not a matter for, to be discussing if it was too late or too early. When it comes to preventing Zika and, and attacking these very specific mosquitoes that are causing this virus, do you think Latin American countries have the resources to fumigate and, and to spray and to get rid of the, the cause? Yes and no. Remember Latin America has countries that are very rich, countries that are middle income countries and very poor countries. In the Pan-American Health Organization we have eight priority countries based on human development index, on uh, gross national income, and so on. So countries like, uh, for instance, in Central America, uh, Haiti, um, may need some help from the international community. And I think it's a collective responsibility to go and offer help from international donors and so on. Because it's not only about fogging, it's about covering the entire country with an aggressive, sustained prevention and control of the mosquito. It's not a weekend campaign. It is something that is, should be steady and for you know, at least a few months to go to ensure that we, um, we do the proper thing. I mean, many countries in Latin America, water is not um, available readily. So many families keep water in containers. If these containers are open, that's the perfect recipe for mosquito breeding. So we need to make sure we educate the families that they need to cover these water containers because that's the only prevention they have to avoid breeding sites. Picking the garbage, it's something in Latin America we have seen that we need to push, accelerate that. The mayors of the cities of Latin America, big cities like Rio, like Sao Paulo, Mexico City, uh, Buenos Aires, garbage needs to be picked up you know, steadily, acceleration of that. We're not saying they're not doing it, but we can always do better. You know, it seems like every day we're hearing of more and more countries being added to these lists of countries that you shouldn't travel to or that you should take precautions before you go to. Um, what do you make of these travel warnings? And what are some of the greater impacts that can be caused by preventing people from going there? Well, you know, uh, that's a very important question. In the declaration of emergency, WHO doesn't recommend any travel uh, prevention. Um, some countries can do that, and we respect that. But for instance, having 22 countries affected, meaning the whole of the Latin America probably is at risk because the mosquito is present there, what is the purpose of not um, asking people to travel? We need to take into account also the economic impact. 
tourism, industry, all these type of things. So I think it's important that if people are going to travel, they can decide on themselves, assess the risk. But if they're going to travel, they, they have, uh, they have uh, measures to take. Repellents, you know, avoid contact with the mosquito, use long trousers, use long shirts and things like that. But stopping or recommending not to travel, which again is a prerogative of every country, in our view is not going to stop the spreading of virus, Zika virus in Latin America. Why? Because two things. The mosquito is highly prevalent in all countries except Canada and continental Chile. And also, the population of the Americas was not exposed before to this virus. It was naive in terms of immunity. And because it was never in the Americas. So far, that's the evidence shows that and if we are not exposed, then we are at risk. The good thing is that Zika, different to Ebola, is not a, a serious, severe disease that kills like Ebola. It doesn't kill people. Zika, it's um, um, uh, a disease that, that generates immunity. So with time passing, we will see less and less cases. And it comes and goes. The peak of the epidemic is estimated in three to four months. So uh, that's when countries made some recommendations regarding women of reproductive age and women of, of, of pregnant women. What is your biggest concern with what's been happening? And do you think we'll see conditions get worse before they get better? If the countries don't take action, because the opportunity is now, because they don't, some of the countries don't have the serious outbreaks that Colombia and Brazil having. If they take action now, they're doing their job because they will minimize the impact of the mosquito uh, and the virus. Now, if they wait for the outbreak to come, then that's a concern because then if indeed produce microcephaly, we might be seeing cases of microcephaly. And we don't want that. We want to minimize that as much as possible, regardless if Zika is the cause of microcephaly or not. We will look into that with the research coming. But forget about that. Let's do the prevention and control of the mosquito. Because that's the only tool we have at the moment. The vaccine will come, but later, not tomorrow. So if we are able to control and eliminate mosquitoes, then the impact will be minimized. Dr. Marcos Espinal, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate your insight. My pleasure.